I want to share something personal with all of you. Um, I organized this event because my life personally was changed by Pema Lama. He taught me all the tools I needed to be a better person and be a better, a better mother. I just want to say that the things that I learned are very simple and they're not just for Buddhists. They're for everybody. You just have to find it from within you. Nobody will do it for you. Except Lama Pema was the great guidance for me. Sungatelet? <laughs> And the Nundi Zambala, Tanganazuki, Mendokana Pobilaga, Kepjir Musigi, Kashi Sungi, Dujundu, Dulim, Tama Sunya, the Pekish Mudinjere, and the Nundi Zambalaya, Tene, Tanganazu, Tula Kande, and the Tatrunger, Kajayabiki, Jaza de la Yuti Zambala, and the Kutula Kan de laya, Zamin Kasakani, Chijunami, Negorbare, Chijava.
It's just temporary, I promise. Okay. So you need a place to stay. Excuse me? I've been seeing you, you know, you've been standing here for a long time. Is there anything that I can help you? Actually, I came here because I... With the winds from the south at 17 miles per hour, it's currently... I saw you. you saw I... me? Yeah, outside. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you to open the gate for me, but this place is so beautiful. I just... Mm, yes, it looks very beautiful, yeah? Well, I guess I should go. Are you looking for something here? I don't know. I just like it here. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a monastery. You know, uh, many people come here. You know, the prayer and the energy here is very good. Mm -hmm. I think if you are lost, you know, it's a good place you came here. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I saw this place on TV. On TV? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yesterday. Oh, okay. That's nice. So it's strange. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, my name is Tenzin. Oh, well, I'm Daisy. Nice oh, to nice to meet you. Yeah, so this is our courtyard. Uh, it's a, our, you know, small private place. So beautiful. Yes. So we have uh, lots of room here. So these are all, you know, the down rooms are all for the monks. And, you know, you can see on the top, it's where our teacher stay. So you live here? Oh, yes. We all stay here, all the monks. You know, we have almost seven monks here. Okay. Yeah. How come you look so sad and why are you sitting here alone? I don't know. I just... I liked the day. It was a really nice day. But... When I go back home, everything's going to be the same, so it feels kind of pointless. So you can stay here, relax, and, you know, uh, bring, you know, positive energy because it's very quiet and it's a retreat room. That's true. Yeah. So how long can I stay here then? Mm, as long as you find your peace of mind or as long as you uh, feel, you know, comfortable here, you know, you can stay here. But I'm not a Buddhist. You don't need to be a Buddhist, you know. Our ultimate goal is to help everyone, you know, bring happiness to them. And, you know, it doesn't matter which background you are. We just try to help them, you know, bring peace to them. That's really nice. Yeah. You have a lot of questions. You know, when the student is ready, the teacher will just show up. As I said, we have so many good teachers. So you need to be, you know, calm and slowly, you know, you will learn everything. Okay. Oh, um, by yeah. the way, how much should I pay you for the room? Pay? You don't need to pay. You need to pay attention. <laughs> okay. Good morning. 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 How are you? Good, thank you. This is for you? Oh. You feel cold? Uh, a little bit. Okay, you can wear this one. This is for you. Thank you so much. Okay. You can wear it like that, put it here. Like this? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Then you can join us. At your table? Yeah, don't be shy. Okay, thank okay. you. Excuse me, we need an uh, offering for Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Namo Bhagavate Sumeru Galvaraya Dada Gadaya Arate Samya Sambhadaya Deya Dham Kalve Kalve Ma Shodhane Zohai Dham Balame Sangirin Bhushi Jobalame Dham Shirin Bhushi Jambalame Dham Ne Kuncho Sumla Shubham Why do you pray? We appreciate that all of the beings. And because we, right now we're ready to eat, but everybody's work very hard. They prepare for us, we appreciate everybody. 
pins. That's true. And you don't eat meat? No, we're not allowed to eat meat in monastery. Oh. Even we don't hurt other animals because we save life for animal. It's so good. Really? Mm. Do you eat together every morning? That's so nice. It's like a family. Yeah. You have some student reading for him. Oh. So Lama is quite busy. So Lama needs to go. Okay. Okay. See Thank you me. later. What's his name? His name is Lama Pema. He's our teacher here. So, who does he teach? He teach everyone. It seems you have lots of questions. Karma and uh, you know, me, we can give you a small tour. All the teaching come from him. He is the fund founder of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. So he is the main teacher. So he passed the message to student student. Then we got from our main teacher. So till. And who is Lama's teacher then? So. He's the Lama's teacher. He's the Lama's He's teacher, Changurimbuche. So basically, you know, all the teaching, you know, from Buddha to uh, his student and so on, it passed from one to another. You know, uh, that's how you know the Buddhism uh, or the Tibetan Buddhism is, you know, mainly, you know, uh, you know, more focused on coming from one lineage to another and you know, set, set, uh, giving the you know the message of the Buddha to everyone. Mm. And then. Lama teaches you, right? Yeah. Monks? Yes. So, can I become a monk? Anybody can become a monk? Yes. Um, if you have the will or if you have the intention to become a monk or a nun, yeah, absolutely everyone is you know, welcome to be a monk or a nun. Yeah. Yeah? But we, you have to go through some process? Yeah, you have to be very much well disciplined. Uh, you, know, you have to be very full commitment that you, know, you can do it. You know, if you think it's just for you know, a few year or something, then I think it's not so good for yourself and you know, for the you know, Buddhism itself. It's a life commitment. Yes, kind that's of. right. Mm. So what do you do here every day? Like mm, in here, you know, we have our own, own you know, curriculum. different curriculums. Yes, schedule. So every day, basically, we have every day we have schedule. So we have to follow through the schedule. We so have a, sometimes yeah. we teach. Yeah, sometimes we teach, uh, but then we have a very, uh, you know, a strict, you know, uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to go early in the morning, and then we try to uh, read all the teachings of the Buddha and try to contemplate that, and sometimes put that into meditation. You know, and uh, you know that's the reason why we. Are I've only ever seen monks on TV. I never imagined meeting one in real life. The monks here follow a strict schedule. And every single day, the master delivers his teachings. The main purpose of the teachings is to spread love and care to the people around them. One may even say it is their mission. Pina Lama is the head master in the monastery and is in charge of teaching the monks about discipline, commitment, and meditation. Although being students themselves, the monks are required to teach those who visit the monastery. It is amazing to see teaching becoming part of their learning experience. Hello. Oh, hi. hi. Are you waiting for Lama Pema? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you going to meet Lama Pema too? Yeah. Oh. Um, you can tell me a little bit about Lama Pema and your experience with him? I'm from Nepal and I uh, was born as a Buddhist family, a okay. Buddhist family. But um, um, I didn't, as a born Buddhist family, I didn't know the essence of the Buddhism. And uh, I, all I know is to be nice to people, nice to be all beings, and that's all I know. But since I met Lama Pema and he taught me the real essence of the Buddhism, you know, what is a real Buddhism, so this, you came in the right place. And uh, so. he's uh, one of the most profoundly knowledgeable guy and uh, master. And um, he did a three years retreat, and uh, he uh, finished his uh, university master degrees in Buddhism. Oh. So he's uh, he's a great master. I probably will seem really 
stupid in front of him. I don't know any right now. So. <laughs> oh yeah, day by day. Oh. And you need, you don't need to nervous to be nervous <laughs> because the guru and uh, we we call Lama our guru. And mm -hmm. um, the relationship between you and the guru is the most important during. Like during the practice, you can mm. share everything, anything with Lama. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. You're welcome. I was just talking to your followers, and they had really nice things to say about you. And so I'm really glad that I'm meeting you. Um, it's the first good thing to happen to me in a while. So I was hoping I could talk to you. I have a son, and he's five years old. And as I'm constantly stressed or anxious or worried <coughs> or, or all these negative emotions, you know, because I lost my job and I I don't know what I'm good at or what I'm bad at. Like I don't know what's my purpose. I just feel like I'm failing. Do you understand? You're doing the best you can. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I am. We just want you to be happy. That's all I want for Danny, too. I just want him to be happy. He is happy. You know what? I know. Why don't you go on a trip by yourself? Take a few days, see where the road takes you. Lama Pima was born in Tsum, in Nepal, Tibet, border on the Himalayas, in a family of great Buddhist practitioners. Lama Pema is now the head resident Lama of the monastery, the chief representative of VV Srang Rurin Posh for North America. In February 2012, Lama Pema added another milestone to his accomplished monastic career when he was selected as one of the retreatants for the Akshobhya retreat under the guidance of His Holiness the 17th Karmapa. He is the eldest son of Lama Pema Rin Posh, who traces his family lineage to the great 13th century Ningma Master Guru Chawang. Guru Chawang is known as one of the five great Tertans. Guru Chawang himself was an emanation of Guru Rinpoche as well as an incarnation of Tri Sung Dutsen, the second Dharma king of Tibet who invited great masters such as Guru Rinpoche, Shantarakshita, and Vimalamitra to Tibet. So I was hoping you could help me with that. You have to recognize your mind. What are you doing right now? In the past, you have lost the past, you have something happen. Just forget what has happened in the past. And don't think about the future, how going to be take care of your son, what you are going to do future. Just for thinking right now, what is doing right now, you can do right now. But if I'm not happy, I can't take care of him. So. How can I be happy? How can I find happiness? Because happiness is not coming from the sky, not coming from art. You have to look back to see your mind, okay? I will try. Be happy. Then you can outside there have some my strength. You can make friends. Maybe they will share you some their problem. And even if you're probably share with them, and maybe slowly. Slowly, slowly, everything yeah, will be fine. Okay. It won't be in one right away, but slowly, you know, you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, please, you can join for the, you know. Right now? Yeah, puja. And then Thank you so much. You're welcome. So this is a shrine hall. So right now, they are doing a prayer uh, for everyone, for all people. So before uh, you know, we enter into the main hall, uh, you know, we need to do three prostration. So you follow me, I will teach you, okay? 
So first like this, on full head, and then your speech, and then mind. Oh, he is good. Isn't it? It's very nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He studied about these things. He learned. He studied. Yeah. How to sing? Yeah, he studied how to sing, and he learned. We have to go through the process. So he went to three, four a retreat, and yeah. What does he do in that retreat? So we have uh, so many different kind of practice, meditation, meditation, and like we pray. So if your voice is not so good, you can't play. You have to practice voice. So everything you have to go. Yeah, you need more patience and you you need more focus, like mindful. So it's very important while you make this flower, you have to be very mindful. Otherwise, if our mind is distracted, so it's not very good. So you, you have to be always mindful, same as our life. So we have to be mindful every time. Yeah, it's good, right? Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. So we're done now. Uh, not finish all, but patience, focus, mindfulness. These are important ingredients of life in all aspects. Whether it be meditating or making crafts, the monks take every opportunity to practice patience, focus, and mindfulness through all daily activities. To practice mindfulness, Lama takes us hiking. Hiking in the forest enables us to connect with nature. We always see shows that you do all these exercises. Why do you do all these exercises? <laughs> Actually, I don't like to be exercise, but if I also like to healthy, right? If you like healthy, then you have to do exercise. What do those uh, designs mean? What is the one? The design. The, the this design, I don't know, maybe, probably you can ask this company. <laughs> <laughs> So Lama basically was saying that nature, of, uh, the nature itself is empty. Even our mind nature is also empty. So we just look at the nature, that how it is. You know, the trees, the branch, all the leaves are moving. So we just need to see, you know, again nature. Just, you know, focus on those. 
you know, the tree, the nature, and then relax your mind. Meditation starts with the smallest steps. Taking deep breaths, feeling the ground beneath your feet, and just be one with your surroundings. Okay, today I'm going to teach you mind, mindfulness. Because you have a lot of thought, you have to concentrate for the, your mind. And when you eat fish, when you're walking, you're eating, all the time you focus to your mind, watch mind, what is doing your mind. You need body state, and the two leg and the badger, two, yeah, it's fine. And two hand join like that, put here. And you have to see your eyes come down to see push over your nose. And your tongue put in the up and relax and calm down. Just try like meditate like that. Right now, you can just go back side of the monastery and you walking meditate. The outside, the nice natural environment. You can go there, both house, and just go through there. You think like both is thinking, blind, they don't have suffering. You like their freedom. But we can see everybody outside looks like it's very beautiful, looks like it's very peaceful, but everything, every society, everything inside, everybody has suffering, everybody has problem. And what, big problem or small problem? But everybody has problem. Even both, we call animal realm. We Buddhist view, we believe the recognition, we have uh, karma, we believe the karma in the cause, because we have past life, good karma connection. This life is a wonderful life, come back. Now we prepare for the next life. If you this life, good life, good things, meaningful life, the next life, just I call you precious human life, very difficult to born human life. If you this life, back action, bad thing, and next life, difficult to born human life. And Buddha say everybody has Buddha nature. You have, I have, all the beings of Buddha nature. But we didn't recognize you have Buddha nature. Just, you just, now you told me I'm going to try. But you have to keep promise I'm going to do it. You have Buddha nature. Don't be, oh, I cannot do it. I can be, don't think like that. And everybody have Buddha nature. You can practice, you can meditate, you will be enlightened. Happiness coming from environment means your happiness coming from your friends, families, other people. You Meditating can assist in calming a person in a short period of time. Nice when we're calm, there, we can see and hear much happy. more than they usual. It's like a blind person seeing Everybody for the first time. Love you. Some you call this enlightenment. Other people. Only when other you people feel your emotions in a truthful and meaningful way are you then able to connect with the real you. What can I do when I leave this place to have that same sense of gratefulness <clears throat> and, you know, I can do it, you know, that kind of stuff. Do you have any ad advice? For me, I think the best uh, suggestion is like, <clears throat> even in our going, according to the Buddhist philosophy, the biggest happiness is the satisfaction. 
and the biggest well is the satisfaction. So you have to satisfy what you have and you have to appreciate. So once you are satisfied, then I think it will be fine. So appreciate what I have. Yeah. Satisfy what you have, don't hope for much, you know. Okay. Satisfaction well, comes from you. appreciating what you already have in life. Had a great time with you this all is a here. new concept I've Tomorrow learned I in the monastery. I am truly happy here. But I'll come back and I have soon. observed that the monks too. here are always happy, like even though they tell me well. that they too Thank feel you. anger sometimes. Okay, so What's amazing <laughs> to me is their Johnny, ability to put Thank their you. negative emotions aside as they enter the shrine. I wanted to say goodbye and thank you for everything you taught me and I will take all your teachings and lessons with me back home. You're welcome. You can continue come back and thank you for coming. Thank you. And this is for you. <laughs> this is for you. Thank you. This Can I open it? Yeah, sure. Oh. Who's this? This is uh, my teacher and the uh, venerable Tongurum Bache. Mine's our lineage head of the Holiness Kamapa. That's amazing. And you can read this one. And yeah, this is your homo. Okay. okay. I'll do it, I promise. Yeah. And I will bring my son here. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. I have a small present for your son. <sighs> Mala. That's beautiful. You're Thank you. Thank you so much. I never felt at home anywhere as much as I do here. I see. And I really appreciate all your kindness. You're welcome. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Having done my homework, my son, I met the Lama again. Today, I still experience challenges, just like I used to. What's different is that I am now able to observe my emotions. Once I see what it is that's troubling me, I don't feel as bad. It's as if the negative emotions have less impact on me when I can clearly see the challenges I'm faced with. That's what I've learned from Lama. It may this. sound it easy, but it takes a lot of practice. You you yes, I practice the method again <laughs> and again, that so that I can gain better control of my emotions no, and my mind. <laughs> Mindfulness Lama is key. As Lama taught me, don't look at the past, don't look at the future. The best, <laughs> Just focus on what Lama you're doing right like now. Mantra, By focusing on the, the now, temple? I feel better. Remember that I, was I will kind of, always remember his words. You know, sad. Happiness does and not come from above, not from others, not better. from the heart, but from the mind. So with the meditation, we need to understand that, you know, uh, the thoughts that arise in our mind, it's limitless. We cannot, you know, count them. It's uh, beyond our thought. And sometimes there are good thoughts coming on, sometimes there are happy thoughts coming on. But then we need to understand and recognize that uh, where the thoughts are coming from and what is the essence of the thought. 
uh, for example, <clears throat> if you look at the ocean, uh, you know, uh, every moment, every second, you know, there will be a wave coming on. Uh, similarly, uh, we cannot stop the wave. You know, it will keep coming and coming. Uh, and our thoughts will be also very, you know, similar. You know, with sometimes very happy thoughts, sometimes very sad. And sometimes when we have a happy thought coming on, so we feel very happy and, you know, we try to do so many things, you know. And sometimes when we are sad, then, you know, we try to harm or, you know, affect other people. So with that, we need to recognize our thought and look at the essence of the thought. So, thank you for that. Anyway, um, enough with that. Everybody can now, you know, eat and laugh. I just wanted to share my story so everybody could understand that spirituality is for everybody. Thank you. So again, uh, when I was at the age of uh, nine, uh, I was in one of the boarding school. And then uh, when I was in school, so uh, whenever I see uh, uh, monks or uh, any uh, statues of the Buddhas or so on, uh, at that very young age, uh, I have a very strong connection that I feel very happy when I see those monks or uh, the statues of Buddha or uh, the monastery. So, uh, having said, uh, from that very small age, even though my family, you know, do not want me to become a monk, even though my family uh, do not want, you know, uh, me to send to the monastery, but then I have that sort of uh, connection or the interest to become a monk, so I ran out of my house and uh, went to the city and became a monk. Just how much I needed your embrace. 